Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a war and drama movie from 2008 called Stop Loss. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie begins by showing scenes from the squad's remaining 28 days before they return to the United States. While at a checkpoint, they hear gunshots. Suddenly, a car carrying insurgents speeds by and one of the insurgents shoots at them. King's team quickly gets into their Humvees and chases the insurgents into an alley. But as they get out of their vehicles, the insurgents ambush them from the rooftops. During the intense gunfight that follows, a rocket-propelled grenade hits and destroys one of the Humvees, killing two soldiers inside. Another RPG goes off, wrecking an Iraqi vehicle. Private First Class Tommy Burgess barely avoids injury as his fellow soldier, Rico Rodriguez, heroically throws himself over Tommy, absorbing most of the blast and getting badly hurt. Shortly after, another squad member, Paul Preacher Colston, is fatally shot in the neck and jaw right in front of Tommy. Amidst all this turmoil, Staff Sergeant King enters a house to help another wounded soldier, Sergeant Steve Shriver, and tragically finds that his actions have led to the accidental deaths of several Iraqi civilians. Stunned by the unintended outcomes of his decisions, King struggles with the brutal realities of war following an ambush that resulted in the loss of three soldiers. When they returned to Texas, the soldiers received a hearty reception from the community, with residents lining the streets holding signs and flags to welcome them. Despite the overwhelming support, Brandon felt swamped by the crowd and was reluctant to give a speech. Seeing his friend's hesitation, Steve offered his help and support. After the welcoming ceremony, a senator spoke with Brandon, expressing his pride and offering assistance. The senator proposed moving Private Rodriguez to a hospital in the U.S. Brandon thanked him, saying he would reach out if he needed further assistance. That evening, they went to a party where they enjoyed some drinks. Steve became too inebriated to dance with his fiancée, so Brandon danced with her instead. During the dance, Brandon began to talk about his war experiences, making the guests uncomfortable. Later, Michelle called Brandon, asking him to come over. When he arrived, he found Steve digging a hole in the front yard. Brandon tried to talk to Steve, but his words were incoherent. Inside the house, Brandon noticed the disarray and saw a bruise on Michelle's face, realizing Steve had hit her. Steve was found asleep in the hole he had dug, clutching a gun. The following day, after Tommy drove over drunk, having been thrown out by his wife, Brandon suggested they all head to a ranch, a small forest cabin outside of town. They spent their time there drinking and watching Tommy shoot his wedding gifts while their friend Shorty read the accompanying cards. Steve, nursing a hangover, was asleep in the trunk. He was jolted awake by the sound of gunfire, quickly got dressed, and joined the others as Shorty handed him a gift meant for Steve and Michelle. Steve then aimed and shot at it. Later that night, Brandon confronted Steve about hitting Michelle. Steve confessed that he had blacked out and woke up in the trunk of Tommy's car. Brandon sternly told him that such behavior must not happen again. The next day, Brandon, Tommy, and Steve returned to their military base. Brandon, expecting to be discharged, was instead ordered back to active duty in Iraq. Frustrated, he went to speak with the lieutenant colonel about the unexpected order, citing the stop-loss policy and the president's declaration that the war was over. When Brandon criticized the president, the lieutenant colonel reacted negatively, leading to a confrontation. The lieutenant colonel charged Sergeant Brandon with disobeying orders and being a flight risk and ordered his confinement. As two soldiers escorted Brandon, he resisted and managed to escape. He called his friend Steve to confess that he had knocked down a couple of guys and gone AWOL after being ordered back to Iraq. Steve suggested that Brandon seek help from their superior, Boot, but Brandon explained that Boot was the one sending him to confinement. Steve told Brandon to stay calm while he tried to sort things out and promised to cover for him. Brandon discussed his plan to speak with a senator and his family. His father initially hesitated, worried about breaking the chain of command and going behind Boot's back, but eventually agreed to support him. Brandon's wife, Michelle, offered to accompany him, and they booked a hotel for the night. While at the hotel pool, Brandon thought he saw someone in danger and jumped in to save them, but it turned out to be a false alarm. Steve later called to inform Brandon that he had spent the night trying to bail their friend Tommy out of jail after a DUI arrest. Steve was frustrated because Boot was planning to discharge Tommy, and as the squad leader, Brandon needed to address the situation. Brandon then told Steve he was heading to Washington, D.C. to meet with the senator. While on their trip, Brandon and Michelle visited the family of Paul Preacher Colson, a soldier under Brandon's command who was killed in an ambush. 
Brandon recounted the events of the attack at a checkpoint, their pursuit into an alley, and the subsequent ambush where Preacher was covering their flank. He acknowledged his role in leading his men into the ambush and described the severity of the attack with RPGs, small arms, and explosions. Upon returning to their car, Brandon and Michelle found that their car window had been broken. Brandon told Michelle to wait for him while he went to confront the culprits. He found them in an alley and got into a fight. One of the men pulled a gun, but Brandon managed to disarm him and force them to kneel, preparing to shoot. Michelle arrived just in time to stop him, and they left together. Afterward, they checked into a hotel where Michelle helped Brandon clean his wounds. Later, Brandon met with another soldier who had gone AWOL, who recommended a lawyer to help obtain forged discharge papers. With these papers, Brandon could start a new life in Canada. While Brandon was in the bathtub, Steve knocked on the door. He entered and, noticing Brandon's bruised face, asked what happened. Steve told him if he returned to base within 14 hours, all charges would be dropped. Brandon was hesitant, but Steve was insistent about helping him. They then learned that Brandon was accepted into sniper school, which upset Michelle, who questioned when they would get married. Brandon promised marriage after the mission, echoing a promise made five years earlier, leading to an argument. Outside, Steve shared his frustration about the situation with Brandon, Tommy, and Michelle. He revealed Tommy's struggles and urged Brandon to return to duty. Brandon refused, criticizing the war's management and their roles as soldiers. He accused Steve of being manipulated by their superior, Boot, and mentioned that the senator would not help him since he was a fugitive. Meanwhile, Steve dealt with a drunken Tommy who broke a jewelry store window, setting off an alarm. Brandon and Michelle later visited Rico, a soldier who had saved Tommy in Iraq but was severely injured, resulting in blindness and the loss of an arm, a leg, and suffered facial burns. Rico described the hospital scene that night as horrific, filled with screams and nightmares, while Michelle stepped away to give them privacy. Brandon expressed his relief for getting out in time and told Michelle that they were going to send him back. In the car, Brandon opened up about why he originally joined the military and his growing disillusionment when he saw the reality of the war. He talked about the chaos and uncertainty on the battlefield where it seemed like everyone had weapons and no one could be trusted. Brandon shared his guilt and trauma from witnessing deaths of friends and the impact it had on his mental state. He also confessed to her about accidentally killing innocent Iraqi civilians. Brandon then called the lawyer, stating he needed his services urgently. The lawyer refused to discuss details over the phone and ended the call, instructing Brandon to meet him with $1,000. To gather the money, they exchanged their car for a bike and, with cash in hand, went to meet the lawyer. At the meeting, the lawyer warned Brandon that there was no turning back after this step and gave him a new ID and a contact number for someone who would pick him up. After taking the money, the lawyer left. Later, Brandon called his mother from home and received the tragic news of Tommy's suicide. A proper funeral was held for Tommy, and afterward, Brandon went to visit Tommy's grave where he ended up in an argument with Steve. During the argument, Steve punched Brandon, blaming him for leaving. The confrontation quickly turned into a physical fight, ending with Steve breaking down in tears. Overwhelmed, Brandon left the scene and went back to his parents' house to say goodbye to his father. He, his father, and Michelle then drove to the Mexican border. However, upon reaching the border, Brandon decided he couldn't leave behind everything he knew and chose not to cross into Mexico. He explained to his mother and Michelle that going to Mexico wouldn't allow him to truly escape the war. Brandon, along with Steve and other soldiers, prepared to deploy to another war. Michelle, accompanied by Brandon's parents, came to say goodbye as they boarded a bus. Inside the bus, Brandon made a silent gesture of solidarity to Steve, acknowledging the uncertainty of their situation. As the bus moved forward, the final scene showed a solemn yet determined group of soldiers, including Brandon and Steve, heading back to the front lines. This concludes the movie. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.